Hello everybody, I have got some great news today. So those of you familiar with um, Turbo Mode in Disco Diffusion, it was a video recording mode you could use in 3D mode that would really speed up the video. And the Deforum Notebook people have really come through. They have introduced something that I think is even better than Turbo Mode. So again, if you haven't used the Notebook, if you're new to Stable Diffusion, this is one of my first tutorials you've watched which this will actually be more of just kind of a demo than a tutorial. There's not a lot here to learn, but I'd recommend going and looking at my other videos to learn how to use it. But let's jump right in here because I'm really excited about this because, um, well, I'll, I'll show you and tell you here in a minute. First of all, I'm just running my notebook here like normal. I have not done anything different yet. Oh, yeah, and here's the link to the D Forum Discord server where you can get amazing help and demonstrations of new features. I actually found this feature on the Deforum server. I usually visit there at least once a day or so. And again, we're just running everything like normal. Now, when we get down here to the animation part, this is where we're gonna start doing the changes. So it says that it works in 3D mode or 2D mode. Right now, I'm just using 3D mode. And let me see, this is just my zoom forward, this parameter. I also have a tutorial on how to use 3D mode. If you're not familiar with it, watch that as well. But in 3D mode, the zoom up here, this does not do anything. This is our zoom here. This is what tells us to move the camera forward, the translation Z. And I've only run this once so far, so I'm trying out right now a strength schedule of 7. So this is not new. Let me show you when we get to the new part down here. Diffusion cadence right here. This is an amazing feature. So the higher it is, the more coherent your video is going to be and the faster it is going to render. This will, I believe this is kind of like the skip steps in turbo mode, but I did try it on 8 and it worked pretty well for Max. It gave me a pretty coherent video last time. I'm going to go ahead and we'll start here with just this on, you know what, let's just go ahead and go full, full bore at 8. So this is really the only parameter that's different for this mode. So this is just, like I said, this is just going to be more of a demonstration. Now, one other thing, you do need to have use depth warping checked. And normally, I know that added a little bit of render time before because it kind of generates a 3D map while it's making the image. So make sure you have this checked. And I believe it's on by default with this new notebook. This is the 0.4 notebook now. But other than that, um, the default... The, the fusion cadence was default at 1, so I'm going to go ahead and crank it up here. And let's go ahead and run this section. And then I've already entered my prompts here. I'm kind of doing a 70s sci-fi space theme here. And I have actually haven't used this particular prompt. I always change my prompts around a bit. I'm going to leave it here at 512 by 512. And I've got 250 steps. I like to put in extra steps for animations. And let's go ahead and run this and see what we get here. This is, I'm just making a 400 frame animation. I'm going to go ahead though, I'm going to let you see it here for a little bit just so you can see how fast it's rendering. Okay, and it is loading a couple extra things. Look like it is starting now. Frame zero out of 400, so I got 400 frames here. And I'm just going to let it run just a little bit just to show you how fast it's going to render this. And I'm doing eight point three iterations a second. That's the steps. So I'm getting eight steps a second right now. And that steps usually cuts in half when it starts the animation. It, it does your full steps just for the very first frame. Then it usually cuts it based on your strength setting. Okay, there we go. And we are off and running. And if you notice rendering frame eight of 400 already. So it looks like it's doing eight at a time here with that set on eight. And that's a pretty nice looking animation too. And it's already, now it's doing the next eight. So this will be done in a hurry here. I just wanted to show you that. And we'll come check on it at the end here. I might have that set a little too high. It might kind of start looking bad towards the end there. We'll see. But I'll come check on this. This is done and show you the results. Okay, hey everybody, I'm just kind of checking in here halfway through my video here. Now I also want to address one of the issues here. One of the things with the AI animation that's always had a problem is the coherency. So if you make your animation where it doesn't change that much, then you'll get stuff where you don't get that much detail and just looks really bad after a while. And then if you did it the other way, where you have it rendering, it 
where you have it less cohesive, where like each frame doesn't look as much like the previous one, then it just kind of flickers a lot and the video is constantly morphing. So I went really ambitious with this one on the coherency settings. So I'm, I'm going to turn it down a little bit though, but let me show you where that is. And it's still rendering uh, pretty good, but as you can see, we're getting a little bit of detail loss there, which just kind of happens. But this new mode here, I haven't seen anything like it. Turbo mode and in disco just didn't come close to this really and like i said i set this really ambitious with not just the um the cadence settings but also my strength settings so let me show you that really quick so the strength setting i have here is 0.7 which is really too high i just wanted to see how coherent i could get it so normally a good setting for that is like around 0 0.6 0 0.65 so if this is really low what will happen is your animation will just constantly morph it won't maintain the same image because it's using less of the previous image. So what I'm going to do on the next one, I'm going to use the same seed, and I'm going to turn this down a bit, and then I'm going to turn down the cadence just a little bit as well, although I'm not really sure how much this affects the coherence yet. So we'll experiment with this together here. So I'm going to turn this down to 6 the next time, and this on 6, and we'll see what we get. But this is rendering really fast. This has only been about 5 minutes. It's already almost done with a 400-frame animation. And it is rendering some new detail there. It's It hasn't gone totally, um, you know, solid or with these lines. But another thing I could do, too, is um, to keep a little more detail is turn down the speed quite a bit, too. So I think this next one will get a much better video. Let's see. It's just about done. So I'll come check back here in a minute or so, and we'll run the video and see what we got with this first one. Okay, the animation's starting to wind down here, and it does look like it did kind of get, you know, not real great detail towards the end, though. So, again, with the seed, this is a great way to test anything you're doing. So, I've already gone into the settings file and got the seed, and I'm going to input it now. So, what the seed will do is it will render this exactly the same. This is a good way to test how your settings work. Because if, if it does a different seed, it'll be a completely different animation, so you won't be able to tell as well the difference. But let's go ahead and run this video now and see how this looks. Looks like it doesn't have a lot of detail towards the end, but I have real high hopes for this next one. Again, though, this is really, you'll see right off the bat, though, how different this is than previous animations done with um, Disco Diffusion or Stable Diffusion or anything, really. It just, the coherency on it is really good. This might take just a minute here. Okay, looks like it generated our video okay, and wow, 30 second video in like, I don't know, 10 minutes. That's amazing. Even turbo mode wasn't this fast. Let's go ahead and run this, and we'll see what it looks like there. You, you notice there right in the beginning how this looks like a video. There's like no flickering at all. This is just unprecedented, really, for these kind of videos. That's just amazing. Even with that detail loss, it just it's so smooth. You know, I haven't seen any videos this smooth without, you know, doing post-processing effects. So that's really cool. I love the, the smoothness of it. But let's go see now if we can get a little more detail, like um, like it looks in the beginning there. So like I said, it's usually a trade-off, but the trade-off was usually quite a bit worse. So I've inputted my seed. So what this will do is just let us see exactly what my setting changes did here. And again, my setting changes, I slow down the zoom a bit. And I'd slow down the strength schedule. I think that's the big one. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and we'll put the diffusion cadence on 6. Okay, and let's go ahead and run this again. Again, this should give us pretty much the exact same type of video. The only difference will be those settings I just changed. Okay, our video is winding down here. Looks like this has a lot more detail just from that subtle tweaking I've done here and this is really this is only about the fourth video I've made from this so let's go ahead and see if we can get this to render the video again in the notebook looks like it's doing good sometimes I do have problems with this I notice a lot of people say that they have issues with this sometimes and I'm not really sure why but I just if, if that happens just if you have a video editor you can just export your frames all your images individually and then put them together in there but I'm I'm really excited about this. This video mode looks just like what we've all always wanted. Those of us that have been using Disco a long time. You know, I really like these AI videos, but there's a lot of flickering, a lot of morphing. It doesn't look, you know, like a video. This really looks like a video. And I'm going to do one more test after this 
where I'm going to, well, we'll see what it looks like here first. But what I was thinking of is to turn this strength down even more because it doesn't really, normally when you have the strength down, uh, let's see, where is it? This, the strength schedule, the lower that goes, it'll like uh, morph the frames a lot. Like each frame will look different than the previous one. But it should be doing that a little bit at 0.6, and it really didn't look like it was at all. Let's go ahead and look at this one. Okay, there it goes. There it's morphing a bit now because I turned that down. But wow, that looks that looks so much better. This cadence setting is really good. And it looks like the parameters I have now are pretty good. It looks like it's still rendering new material. We're getting a bit of morphing, but you know it doesn't look near like it used to. And there we have it. This is Cadence. Yeah, I love it. So you guys go out and create some videos with this. And like I said, I haven't even hardly touched the settings. I'm just using really simple prompts here. And I've just made two 30-second videos in a extremely short time. So this is not just a better than turbo mode. It's just as fast. It's faster. It also has coherence. A lot of coherence. I really, really like this. Should we do one more? Okay, let's do one more. I'll do my fifth video here with you guys. Okay, so this one, um, the one I'm going to do this time, this does work in 3D mode and 2D mode, I read. So we're going to try it in 2D mode here. Now, the 2D mode, the um, translation Z, we're just going to put that to zero. And this is the zoom right there. I'm going to go ahead and slow that down just a little bit. We'll just put 1.03. And we'll try the 2D mode here. We'll keep everything else the same. Yeah, let's go ahead and keep everything else the same. And I was doing that last one. Was it a diffusion cadence of 6? So we could probably turn that down lower. And it might even give us even more coherence. Let's try... No, nah, since, since we're trying it on... Um, 2D mode this time, let's keep everything the same just so we can see any differences here between the 2D mode and the 3D mode. And I'm just going to change this to 2D so I can keep track of it. Okay, guys, I'm in 2D mode here. Looks like I have that zoom a little high. It looks like it's zooming too fast. So the, in 2D mode, those numbers are really small. Like it just goes from 1 to 1.25. So I'm going to turn this down even lower just 1.01 .01 here whoops and i'm just going to run it again here i just think that was going a little too fast it was looking like it was getting a little fuzzy so let's go ahead and try this one more time here and then i have another idea i'm going to try here for the first time ever i think okay our 2d mode is done here let's go ahead and run this now it does look a little different anytime you use um 2D mode, I notice it kind of renders different. I was I've normally mainly use the 3D mode. So you just gotta change your settings a little bit in there when you use 2D. You gotta um, turn the settings down a little bit for the zoom, that kind of thing. But this looks interesting. It looks like it's gonna give us kind of a different render here too towards the end there. Okay, back. That didn't take long at all. Let's look at this one. You can see it starts out looking pretty much the same. We zoom in there, it looks a little fuzzier. But yeah, that's the 2D mode. So I wonder if the depth warp has anything to do with that too, because I know that's kind of based on 3D mode. So, but yeah, it looks good. I think I think it um, still looks cohesive. It's kind of interesting, a little more colorful. I kind of like, I still think I kind of like the 3D mode better, but I do really like those clouds and everything. So it just depends on what you want, you know, but this, this feature is, this is amazing. You know, this is kind of what we've all wanted. Those of us that have been doing AI videos for a while, it looks like this really gets rid of that flickering effect and we can make some actual, you know, kind of more, you know, mainstream videos, kind of, you know, like um, cinematic kind of videos. So let's go ahead. I got one more thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to test. A lot of people have been asking since I did the masking tutorial in painting if we can make a video with that. And I did do a couple of attempts. So basically you can make a video using a starting image. Just normally, I'm not talking about masking, just using a starting image. So what will happen is it will use your starting image in the beginning here, and it will kind of be the same thing. Eventually, your starting image, you'll zoom past, and it will generate something new. So you can, but it won't, like, maintain it. So with the masking, it did look like it maintained it through the video, but it, it started getting real ugly. Like, if you have the same thing on the screen after a while 
on these videos. Yes, that's just the way it works. It kind of gets really ugly. That's why a lot of times if the strength was too high, after a while you render your video just goes to garbage. Okay, so another thing I'm going to test here, a lot of people have been asking me about if we can use that masking effect in a video, in an animation. So you can use a starting image in an animation, but it'll eventually render it out, kind of how the, you know, your first few frames, they eventually change a while. So that's how a starting image works. But it's kind of a cool thing still, you know, if you want to use like a picture of yourself or something you have in mind you know, artwork or something you have, so you can use it as a starting image. So they were asking me if the masked images with the in-painting will work, and I did test it, and it just rendered out after a while. It looked really bad. It stayed there. The mask stayed there through the video, but eventually it just started looking really horrible. So I'm going to do a test on this, though, with the cadence to see. If you notice, I have my init setting turned on now. I'm using an initial image and a mask. These are actually from my weeklies. I created a couple mask files and some images and posted them on my Patreon page. So I'm going to see if we can do a video this way. And I'll come back. And if we can't, I'll still leave this in the, the demo just to let you know. So we'll check on this when this is done. Okay, I just want to show you a bit. So what happened the other day? This is my mask right here. This stairway part here and this. So what happened the other day is eventually this part, like the stairwell here and this, just started looking really bad. They just started getting... A lot of lines you know and they just did not keep any detail so we're gonna see if this does the same effect here or if this will kind of alleviate it that would be cool okay I decided to just jump in here too and kind of show you what the issue was before with the mask so what happened is this part up here that's not masked that changes this part stayed all right for a while but this part here the stairs and these columns, basically the part that the mask is, would eventually just start looking really bad and ugly because it, it's not rendering new information, even with the noise on. So if you notice, you can tell the parts that are changing now. So we'll see, though, if this, it looks like the same thing's going to happen, but I'll keep checking on this, and we'll see if this works or not. Okay, yeah, it looks like I am definitely still getting that same kind of effect. So really, I think the best thing to do just to use a mask in a video is just, just make a green screen out of a still frame. And then, like, I've already have this masked off, so I could just slap a still frame over the whole video with this part. You can see now the columns are kind of starting to melt and get warped. It just it, it doesn't like to render the same thing over and over again for some reason. This this is kind of why um, there's always been kind of a issue with the coherency, how it kind of, if you have it too high, it kind of gets ugly after a while. But um, it's on frame, it looks like it's on frame 70, so it's not doing it as fast, I can say that. Um, before, it would start looking really bad around frame 30 or 40. This would just be a bunch of lines with no detail, which it looks like that is going to eventually happen here. But I'll go ahead and let this run, and if nothing else, this will answer that question as if we, if we can use in-painting initial images in a video so if i did if we didn't have the mask um, what would happen is you could use it just fine and it would just change it after a while but using the mask it looks like it's going to kind of just warp it a bit okay this is done so you can see after 300 frames that's how long my animation is what it did to this but let's go ahead now and just render the video and see what it looks like then i'll try to do some post editing magic Okay, here's everything. So you can see how, how I had this set up with the mask. So what happens is my mask is like from here to here, basically the stairway, and then I had a few different images there. But let's go ahead and see how this looks. That's kind of interesting. See, it kind of looks more like it's morphing, and even though I do have the movement, it's kind of hard to tell there. So I don't know. That's kind of interesting. We'll see what it looks like. We'll see if I can do something here in post-edit. And so that's kind of a cool idea, you know, to be able to use a mask in a video. But this is an amazing feature. This cadence is awesome. I can't wait to go use this. And um, like I said, I posted my prompt, not just my prompts and settings now, but I also even post posted this mask image file that I made there on my Patreon page. And I'm going to start adding a new feature as well. I'm going to start adding my, vi I'm going to start doing a weekly video as well. So I'm going to go work on that. And I'm going to post it here for you guys to look at on YouTube. I'm definitely going to use this cadence feature for it. So I'm going to go try and make something really cool to post here, as well as I'll go ahead and post this in this video. I'm going to go see if I can post edit this and, you know, just put that first image over the top of it and see how that looks. So thank you all for watching and thank you Deforum Notebook for creating this cadence feature. This is awesome. And I'm usually on that Deforum um, Discord server, which again, if you go to the very top of your notebook here, just click on this Deforum and that'll take you right there. Thank you for watching. Everybody have a great rest of your day.